Hi, today I want to do a small tutorial how to write your own ESP32 Bluetooth service. And if we begin with Bluetooth on the ESP32, there are some libraries we can use. And the first we have to do is initialize and enable the Bluetooth controller, then initialize and enable the Bluetooth library. And then we have to know that first we use the generic access profile from the Bluetooth stack. And then we use the generic attribute profile or get. And we have to write for the gap and the get some event handlers. So we receive all the Bluetooth events and can also create new Bluetooth events for our service. And the generic access profile helps us for discovering and advertising our service. And the generic attribute profile helps us to describe our service and also all the characteristics we use inside our service. And we have to know that all device have a unique Bluetooth address. So also have our ESP32 that's unique for every ESP32 on the market and for any Bluetooth chip. So the vendor have to buy a stock of Bluetooth addresses for producing the Bluetooth chips from the Bluetooth special interest group. And for the advertising package of the generic access profile, we have to know that we can declare our own device name and also we can declare the device type. And in the generic attribute file, we can declare a service and the service can have a include and a an characteristic and the characteristic can have properties, a value and a an descriptor. And surely one service can also have many characteristics and includes and a an generic attribute file can have more than one service. And a server generic attribute profile is defined by using UUIDs and you can have 16-bit UUIDs, 32-bit UUIDs and 128-bit UUIDs or unified unique identifier. And if you want to use a 16-bit service class UUID, you have to buy one from the Bluetooth special interest group and it's not cheap to buy one. Or if you an end user and don't want to use a generic worldwide used UUID, you can also use a 128-bit UUID and you can use it for free. And here's some examples for UUIDs like the generic access UUID defined by hexadecimal 1800 where you can have your device name and the generic attribute defined by hexadecimal 1801 and there you have a characteristic for the service changed and there are also more predefined services like the battery service or the human interface services and so on. Or if you want to define your own service, you can start by using your own 128-bit UUID. And there are also predefined characteristics like the battery level or the temperature, or you can also freely define your own characteristics and maybe use the 128-bit UUID. And now let's talk about events. You have to write your own event handlers for the gap, the generic access profile and for the get the generic attribute profile. And if we look at the gap, every event have an declared event identifier and also some parameters. And as an example, we receive an event if our advertising data is set complete in our service and then we can start 
the advertising inside the generic access profile. And for the generic attribute profile, every event have an event identifier and get interface and also one or more parameters. And if we look at the startup phase for our generic attribute profile, we get events like the register event. And then we can configure the advertising data and create our service. And if we get the create service event, then we can start our service and also maybe add some characteristics to our service. Then we get also a start and a stop event and also some events after we add our characteristic. Then we maybe can add a descriptor to our characteristic. And if we get the add characteristic descriptor event, then we can maybe add more characteristics to our service. And we also have to know that for every event we also get a Bluetooth handle and the handle is directly connected with our service, the characteristic and also to the descriptor. And we have to remind this handle because if we get an event, we only know that the event is for this or the other handle. And for every handle, we have maybe write our own callback function. And there are also events for the connect phase, the connect event, the disconnect event, and also an open and a close event. And for the connect event, we have to store the connection parameters and if we disconnect our service, then we should start the advertising again so we can advertise to other devices that our service is present and ready for a new connection. And certainly there are more events, events for the phase that I call the IO phase. And we get an event if someone wants to read data or if someone wants to write data. And if we read data, we have to measure maybe some data or get it from a data store and send it out to Bluetooth. And if someone wants to write data, then we have to store it somewhere in our microcontroller. And the read or write event can be called for a characteristic and also for the descriptor of the characteristics. So if we write maybe to a descriptor, then the event could be start maybe the notification events. So let's start by opening a small demo project and I show you the code work through. So I first start by importing the code by clicking on new, new makefile project with existing code. And I browse to the code by going to my workspace and I open this Bluetooth UART example. So I click on finish, then I search for the project on the project explorer. And here it is. So then I do a right click and open properties. Then I go to C++ general path and symbols, click on import settings, go to browse and browse to my workspace. ESP32, Bluetooth, UART and open this include XML file and I click on finish. And then I open this tab for make targets and maybe I'm just copying all my make targets from another project. So I copy this and then paste this. So I have all my make targets. Then I start by opening the make menu config target and just click on exit. And then I build all my code. So it looks nice. So we can have a look into the code. So let's start by our main file. 
I open the main file and all we do is initialize the Bluetooth controller and enable it with the Bluetooth mode. Then we initialize the BluDread library and, and also enable the library. And then we register our callback functions for the get generic attribute server handler and also for the generic attribute profile handler. And then we also register our application. And that's it. No, certainly not, because if we register our callback function, then also our event handler is called. So let's start by the gap event handler and the the gap event handler just receive an event if the setting is completed and then we can start advertising. And likewise our gets callback the event handler is called if we successfully register our events. And then we can store our gets interface and call our own profile event handler. So let's make this a little bit bigger. So there we have all the functionality for our Bluetooth service. So we have our register event, then we can set maybe the device name and configure the advertising data. And this one calls the gap profile event handler with the start advertising. Then we can create our service. And if our service is ready, then we get the create event and then we can start the service and also maybe add one or more characteristics to our service. And then if we have added some characteristic, we get an add characteristic event. And then we can also check if there are more characteristics to be added or if the characteristic have a descriptor and then we can add the descriptor. And if we add a descriptor, then we get the add descriptor event. And then we can also check the adding of the descriptor. And if we in the IO phase, then we get an event for the reading or also for the writing. And then we maybe can call an callback function. And the function have to be handle all the callbacks for every read and write characteristics or descriptor. So let's have a look into so let's have a look into the defining of our service for this service i use two characteristics and two descriptors and we only have one service so let's start by the values for our characteristics and for the descriptors this is defined in this block then we have our 128 UUID and this is unique for this service and maybe someone can recognize this. This is the UUID for the Nordic UART service. Then we can also define, but this, this is optional, we can define some manufacturer data and then we define our Bluetooth advertising data. And certainly then we have several defines for our advertising data and also the advertising parameters. Then we have a structure for our service and for all the interface data and so on that is stored while we initializing our service. Then I've defined a structure for some characteristics and we have some definition for our characteristic and also for a descriptor. And on startup, we just start without an interface and the interface is defined while we are starting our service. And this is the whole block for describing the characteristics and also the descriptor. So I defined a characteristic with an 128-bit UUID. And this is the RX for the UART service. And I also defined a second one and this is the TX for the UART service. And then as we de defined here, we also have callback functions for read and write the first characteristic and read and write the first descriptor and also callbacks for the second characteristic and the second descriptor. So all the callback functions are described here. And if we read, we just get out the stored 
value like here. And if we write to a characteristic or descriptor, we store the value that we, we received over Bluetooth. And also we send always a response if we get a read or write callback. So, and if we add a characteristic, we go through the whole defined structure and just edit all the characteristics that don't have an characteristic handle and if we add the characteristic we also get an event and after the the event occurs we check the adding of the characteristic and we store the handle that we get from the event and if there are a descriptor then we add a descriptor and also get an event and check the descriptor event also store the handler and after that we may be at a next characteristic or if we don't have a descriptor then we also add a new characteristic and the whole game starts again with this add characteristic until there the whole structure is defined and that's it and today you can get another giveaway from analoglamp.com just read the terms and condition in this video or in the description now let's start a practical demo we first flash the firmware to our esp32 and wait for the flashing and after the flashing is finished we see that our bluetooth is initialized and the bluetooth service is started and also the characteristics are added and the descriptors and all the handlers are stored inside our structure and then we can start a mobile app this is from Nordic Semiconductor the Nordic UART application and we can connect to our ESP32 UART service and maybe send a message i type in hello hello esp32 and send it and we see on the screen that the message is received by our esp32 so this is not so interesting so let's disconnect this uart application and we can use another one from the nordic semiconductor family the NRF toolbox and this is have also a UART service and I predefined some messages so let's open the edit mode and we have up down left and right and info and set up and a special message and we can now leave the edit mode and after connecting to our ESP32 UART service send all the messages to our ESP32. So I press the up button, the down button, left, right, info and so on and we all receive the messages with our ESP32. So now let's disconnect and test another mobile application, the NIF Connect, also from Nordic Semiconductor, what a surprise. And we can test our full service and see all the UUIDs, the characteristics and also the descriptors. And we can just send some messages with the descriptors or also the read functionality and also the writing of the characteristic and we can do it for both the rx service and also for the tx service of the nordic uart service or the esp32 <laughs> fake one for the nordic service Thanks for watching today. I hope you find this interesting, useful or you learned something. I wish you a wonderful day. See you next time and bye bye.